What's up, everybody? For those who are in the Investitrade community, you know exactly who's next to me. It's my good friend, Dylan. Dill, for those who don't know you, why don't you introduce yourself really fast? Hey, everyone. My name's Dylan. I've been trading for six years. Over the last two years, I've been trading for a New York City-based proprietary trading firm. And like many of you guys, I had tons of struggle throughout the first few years of my journey. Uh, there was a few times where I wanted to quit, and I've blown multiple accounts over the years as well. So what would you say is that like aha moment or that pivotal moment that people watching this could relate to or those who are struggling? A lot of people might be losing money. They are failing. They feel like they should stop trading. How can someone like that go to become consistent? How can they be profitable? Like what was your aha moment that those can relate, could trade the same way or feel the same way? So that's an excellent question. So the aha moment for myself during my career was the moment that I started to really prioritize risk management. So I'm fortunate enough to be able to trade alongside with some of the best traders in the world, right? Some of the guys that I sit next to have been trading for longer than I've been alive, okay? So you would think that these guys are so good that they do not take losses, and I promise you that is far from the truth. These guys take losses on an everyday basis. However, they're able to manage risk correctly, okay? So the biggest mindset switch for myself was knowing how much I'm going to lose before I even enter the trade. So that's a really good point because I take losses, you take losses, and like you just mentioned, the guys on Wall Street also take losses. And a lot of people watching this try to avoid losses as much as they can. And they put too much pressure on their trades to avoid the loss that it deviates them away from that process of what's necessary to follow the plan and implement proper risk management. So knowing how much you're gonna lose before you enter it, that sort of takes the guessing out of your trade because you accept that loss and that dollar amount before you enter. Exactly, so having that idea of how much you're going to lose before you even get into the trade sets you up so that you are aware of the worst case scenario. So before any trade that I enter, I know exactly what dollar amount I'm risking. So this really helps me take a lot of the emotion out of trading. Would you say though that emotions cannot be fully taken out of trading, that you're always gonna have emotions, that this just helps you follow your plan and accept the worst could happen and anything better than the worst is gonna be basically like a win, even though you don't win profits or make money. Anything that happens better than the worst case scenario will be a win and this takes the pressure off you and it is less emotions. Exactly, so as Carmine just mentioned, emotions are part of the game, right? We, we are both humans, right? Everyone watching this yeah. is a human being and human beings have mental psychology you can't right? get rid of them cannot get rid of them however knowing what the worst case scenario is before you even enter helps alleviate those emotions interesting okay the moment you feel yourself trading with emotions is the moment you start to make irrational decisions and when that occurs you start getting into the habit of taking mistakes. I feel like when that happens, you revenge trade more, you go on full tilt, you try to make that money back. Let's just say I lost 500 bucks or I lost a thousand bucks and that consistently happens. I'm taking loss after loss after loss. Well, my next few trades, I'm gonna have the mindset of, I have to make this money back. I don't implement proper risk management. I revenge trade. I enter without a solid plan. And now that next trade that I tried to make my losses back on, is triple or double the amount of all those previous losses just by revenge trading. So what helps me ensure that I'm using proper risk management is something that I call an R multiple. Every single trader out there has a different R multiple. What it is, is it's a number that you have in your head that allows you to have an understanding of how much reward you're getting relative to one point of risk, okay? So for myself, I like to use a 2.5 R multiple, meaning for every 2.5 points that I'm making, I'm risking one. So to give you guys an example is if I get long the S&P 500 futures at 4,000 
and my target is 4,010. I know with my 2.5 R multiple, I cannot risk more than four points. So what you're doing is, is if you're risking four points, you have to make at least 10 points. Exactly. Or if you're risking eight points, you have to make at least on the minimum side, at least 20 points. You could go higher than a two and a half to one risk to reward. Now, what this does is you can afford to lose more than you win because your wins are going to take care of your losses because your losses are much smaller than your wins. Exactly. So having that idea that you don't that you do not have to make money the majority of the times to still make money is the biggest thing. So as long as your losses are small, your wins take care of the losses, win rates are irrelevant, and what's the most important factor is your R multiple or your risk management system that is the most leading factor to your data. Exactly. So having that calculated number inside of your head is key before you enter that trade before i enter so now that we know two and a half to one risk to reward or better we know our risk is where our stop loss is and we know our reward is where our target is or better now what are you basing your stop loss off of okay so for everyone watching this video I'm sure you are aware that everyone has different systems. I do want to interrupt and say, I've said this in my other videos, how every trader is unique in their own way. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different way to trade. Everybody has different risk parameters, different account sizes. Now, although we are a little different, we are same in a similar way. Think of a fingerprint on our hand. My fingerprint is going to be similar to his, but it's not going to be identical. So your risk parameter might be different than mine, or the guy that's trading with massive size on Wall Street is gonna be completely different than mine, and we might have different areas of risk or stop losses. Is that exactly, right? but we use that same risk management aspect regardless mm -hmm. of what the system entails. So where would you put your stop loss on a chart to get your one risk to make two and a half? Okay, so two things that every stop loss needs to have. The first thing is it needs to be in an area that invalidates your thesis. Whatever your system is and whatever your reasoning to get into a trade is, the stop loss should be in an area that invalidates that. The second thing that every stop loss needs to entail is it needs to be in an area that ensures that your risk parameters are intact. So give us a recent example of a trade of where your stop loss was and why. So as I mentioned, everyone has different systems. My system has a lot to do with what I see on the chart. I use uh, price action uh, with a ton of other different technical context to allow me to have an edge of where I believe the market heads next. And that's going to invalidate your original thesis. So if you enter at 4,000 and your stop loss is at 39.96, which is four points away, that 39.96 level basically invalidates your original thesis of why you entered that trade. Let's just say you entered that trade because you bounced off of a support level or a demand zone. You found buyers on the chart. We start uptrending. Volume comes in. Your 3996 stop loss level invalidates that original thesis of why you entered at 4,000. Exactly. And if my target is 4,010, 10 points away, right? That see how it matches not only the area of invalidation, but it also falls within that 2.5 to one risk reward. And that's the key. And you're basing that 4,010, 4,020 target of your two and a half to one off of what, where, why are you placing your target at the areas you do? So, every single trade setup that I take is different from the last. Okay. So as a trader, we are dealt different price action, right? Similar to a casino. If you're a blackjack player, you are dealt different cards. So I take the price action that is dealt to me and I use a combination of different technical factors to come up with an area on the chart that I believe has a high probability of price gravitating towards. So almost like magnets the price or areas where you think the market could head or where maybe even the market could possibly reverse after your target hits, 
because that's going to factor into your risk parameters. Exactly. For me, what I see, especially with a lot of retail traders who are struggling that come to us for advice, the biggest thing for me is I see a lot of traders entering positions without a plan and without what we're talking about, solid risk management. Let's say you get into Apple calls just because you see the market coming up. You want to make money. You see a lot of other people talking about it. It's the most hyped thing right now. You see a lot of volume coming in and you hop on that train. You don't have a valid trading plan, but you just get in for no other reason than you want to make money and you don't have parameters that's going to invalidate your thesis, know where you're incorrect or where you're going to sell if you are correct. Now what happens is after we enter this trade, it doesn't go in our way and the market starts reversing on us and a lot of traders hold on to a dead position or what I call a dead position, meaning one that doesn't have a high odd of moving in our favor or working out. They hold it for too long. They don't know where they're incorrect and that loss is like a snowball where it just compounds and compounds and gets bigger and bigger once the momentum is not in our favor. Yes, and we, we all go through that you know, time. you have to go through it to get through it. You have to experience it and you have to experience those losses. Like he said earlier, how losses are like inevitable. They're going you, to happen. You have to take losses to know what not to do more of. Exactly. And going off of what Carmine just said, and this is something that I used to do in my earlier years when I was blowing up accounts. There were tons of times where I would enter into a position not knowing a clear idea of what I was actually risking. And what that does is, let's just say for that example, you enter into Apple calls. There were times where I would take a loss and say, wow, you know, that's that was way bigger than I thought I was gonna lose. And what that does, if, if you get uncomfortable with the amount that you're losing, it's a clear red flag. And that big loss is going to lead to other bad habits, right? You're going to revenge trade. You're going to, you know, go into a feeling of tilt and, and frustration because you just lost way more than you could mentally afford. I truly believe, and I'm sure you could agree with this as well, that everything with trading comes down to repeatability. If I can repeat my risk parameters day after day, then I don't care about losing. I know it's gonna happen, but I know if I follow my plan and I build my edge and follow that day after day, that losses are gonna be little roadblocks or little road bumps that we gotta get over. They're gonna happen, we can't avoid them, but I know my wins are gonna take care of themselves. So would you say you have to become a really good loser in order to win? You have to accept those losses in order to be profitable. It's the name of the game. It is 1000% the name of the game because once you are able to take trades knowing that you do not have to be perfect in order to make money, that is when mentally you're going to pivot. So another example that proves that risk management is the most important aspect in trading is the fact that I was off to a bad slump this year. So. In mid-February, I noticed that my win percentage was only 28%. So in theory, you would think, oh, this kid lost 72% of the trades that he took over a month and a half span, he had to have lost money. But I promise you, I was slightly green on the year despite having a win percentage of 28%. And the only reason that was possible is because of my R multiple. The fact that I was risking way less than my reward. I know for me, when I scalp, sometimes I'll take a one point loss or a two point loss three or four times. And maybe I'll start the day 0 for three, meaning I took three trades, all of them were losing trades. Well, I know maybe my next trade, I might take 20 or 30 points out of the market, where me losing one or two points three different times is nothing compared to that one win that I'm going to take. But that's also because some of my trades, my risk to reward is extremely high based on the entries that I have based off of my system. And I think that's what makes the market so unique is there's so many different ways or strategies to trade. However, if you have a solid foundation or a core to no matter what strategy to use, work on Wall Street, you work from, I don't know, your bedroom, you work from a laptop out in Turks and Caicos. As long as you have that core foundation of a solid risk management parameters and a defined edge that gives you a high probability 
of taking money out of the market when you are correct, then I can guarantee you that strong foundation will lead you to profitability and consistency, which everybody's after. No argument. Thanks to Carmine for having me on today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please drop a like and let us know in the comments that you want more of this type of content. See you all in the next one. Peace out.